Hello, this is Ostris, and I'm really excited about this. Uh, I've been training a Redux adapter. And if you don't know what a Redux adapter is, it's something that Black Horse Labs introduced. Uh, it basically works like an IP adapter, if you're familiar with that. Um, but it attaches to the model in one spot. It just can, it's basically extra text embeddings. And so it makes it really neat, uh, but it takes the embeddings directly from the vision encoder. It runs it through two linear layers. That's it. And then just attaches that onto the text embeddings. So it's, it's a really lightweight model because it's only two linear layers and it works pretty well. I mean, here's their blog where they introduced it. And you can see here, they're getting different image variations uh, and things like that, I guess, you know, adjusting the weight, et cetera. So for the vision encoder, it's actually using Siglip shape optimized 400 million parameter model. Uh, it's kind of the gold standard for most vision models, although new things are coming out, but um, this is still amazing. Uh, one thing with it though, is it does 384. So that means it actually shrinks the image down to 384 by 384 pixels. So it's a, a pretty small image. And so you lose a lot of stuff like texture and brush strokes, things like that. You probably noticed that with, um, the Redux, if you've used it, uh, the original IP adapters, they all use a clip and that's 244. So at 244 by 244, it's significantly smaller. So you lose a lot of these details. And I've played around with training other IP adapters with different Siglet models. And they, they used to have a base model that was 512. So this is the Siglet base 512. Um, this is the only 512 version that they trained of Siglet. One problem with it is it's small. I mean, for the vision encoder and the text encoder, everything at float 32 we have here 815 megabytes i mean it's very small model so it doesn't actually capture a lot of the uh, information the way that a larger vision encoder would but they just recently came out with siglip 2 and they came out with a lot of different variations but the one i'm most interested in is this one so it has the gold standard the shape optimized 400 you know million parameters um it's been trained on a lot more data, uh, but they actually have a 5.12 version now, which in my mind is, this is gonna be the new gold standard. And so what I'm doing is we're going to use this one, uh, the 5.12, and we are going to train a model, a Redux model from scratch for Flex1 Alpha. Uh, that's, if you don't know, that's my open source model you can read about it more here. Um, it's Apache 2.0 license. So the cool thing about that is if we train it on uh, Flux, then it's going to inherit the Flux license. So it's going to be proprietary, et cetera. But if we actually train it on Flex, then it, we can license it Apache 2.0, which I like to do. And uh, it should also work on Flux. It may need to be fine-tuned a little bit, but most of the base training we can get done on flex since it's just attaching to the text encoder it should be very similar to the way that it works as with anything that uses the t5 text encoder uh t5 xxl text encoder theoretically um so you might even be able to use this in other models that use that video models um other image models etc it's a really popular text encoder uh, but that's not what we're going over today today we're going to play around with it a little bit. It's, it's still cooking. Um, we're not done yet. It still has a ways to go, but I'm getting, I'm getting pretty excited about it. Uh, I just ran through this, uh, bear, it's a polar bear, teddy bear with my ostrich logo on it. It's not completely capturing it. Uh, the original redux doesn't really completely capture it either, but, um, we're coming along. The craziest thing about all this is so far I've spent maybe five days training this on a single 3090. I mean, not even a 4090, just 3090 for five days. And we're at a point now where, I mean, this is usable, um, especially if you're trying to do style, just inject concepts, etc. It's usable. And this is using the 512 Siglip. And um, you can 
fine tune this in the toolkit, uh, AI toolkit. So if you want to fine tune it on faces, I'm training one like that as well right now. Uh, if you want to do it on style, I'm intending to train one on style. I mean, you could do it on shirt, logos, clothing, etc. So we'll have this initial base model, the pre-trained model. And then from there, people can take it and fine tune it on whatever they want. So without further ado, let's play with it a little bit. Um, you can already see how well that works. We'll drop in a few other things. So let's take this. It's kind of like a yarn octopus and it says, this is insane. All right. So it is a completely, you know, it's still, we're still training it, still getting there. But one of the cool things is, is it's actually doing the text. So like, this is insane. It's trying to actually spell it out but it's not actually copying pixels for pixels. That's not how it works. It's actually the vision encoder is speaking to the model itself. So it's recreating the text. So it has to learn how to translate what text it's seeing in the image into the model itself so that the model can generate it. Um, so the fact that it's even trying is amazing. Now, as this trains, hopefully the text will get better. Like I said, this is very undertrained at this point. But let's try a few more. So it's capturing a lot of the detail. It's capturing a lot of the texture that's inside the image. And that's one of the things that I'm excited about the 512. And if you look at the 244 and 384, just how much information and fine detail is lost on that versus you know the 512 um, it's a significant amount so with this like with an ip adapter the original ones there's no way you would ever get that fine detail and people tried they tried it with style transfer but it's just not there it wasn't big enough but now with this we should be able to get there or at least get a lot closer All right, and it's, you know, it's trying to get there on the text. It's still not there yet, but I'm going to keep training it, and we'll see how that goes. Let's try a few more here. It's kind of doing it. I mean, it's not perfect, but what is? All right, so now and there's a clock. All right, I'm going to try, I'm going to do one more real quick, uh, just so we can kind of test out those with text. This is a cover for a model I have. All right. And it, yeah, it's kind of getting there. Let's try to mix two images. Okay. So I set it up now where we can do two different images. It's going to shrink them down to 512 by 512, and it's going to put them in a batch together. So this will allow it to run both of the images. Uh, together so let's try that and this one all right yeah that's very cool the way that it can blend them together like that let's try another one all right that one's doing some kind of weird stuff uh let's try another mixture in fact Let's try something different. Let's do three images. All right, so we're set up with three images. So let's see here. I want to do, we'll do the clown. Uh, let's also do, I guess we can leave her there. And I also kind of want to do like a little impasto palette knife style to run that. All right, yeah, that worked out real well. So uh, this is one thing and I love about Redux, I love about IP adapters is how you can like mix and match different things together. And then there's so much you can do with it. It's just a base tool by itself, but this is gonna hopefully open the door for a lot more innovation. So this is all running on Flex right now. Um, I haven't tried it on Flux Dev yet. We'll go ahead and give that a shot as well. Okay, you can see here, I changed it to Flux One Dev. Let's uh, load that up and give that a shot. All right, so it, you know, did a pretty good job. I mean, it, well, we have a big mixture of images here. Let me disable a few of the images so we can see what it does with just one. All 
Okay, so now we're only going to be using this first image. So let's see what that does. So yeah, cool. So yeah, it works with Flux Dev as well. In fact, I kind of really love that image, if I'm being honest. Um, I'll switch it back so we can compare. Okay, I switched it back to Flex 1 Alpha. Let's just run that again just to see the difference. Okay, so it's, you know, they work differently. Uh, this one may be more true to the image, although I don't know, maybe not. Uh, but yeah, it will work with Flux Dev in some capacity. Um, and also, but it's trained on Flex 1. I hope I'm getting all my Fluxes and Flexes right. Uh, and for this, you only need one custom node, and this is just for now. Um, and I'll post links to all of this in the description. So the one custom node you need is right here, the load advanced vision model. This is just to load the Siglip uh, 512, uh, Siglip 2512. Uh, other than that, I mean, it works just like Redux does. So nothing else is really needed. And I'm sure you won't need this node soon. If, you know, we can get this added to Comfy, it's just a few lines of code to do. All right, so that's it, guys. Uh, I'm really excited about this. I'm going to release it in the next few days, probably, or maybe a few weeks. Uh, sometime within the next foreseeable future. But uh, as I'm trying to do now, I'm going to release the current version for my Patreon supporters. So if you're not on my Patreon, I have a link in the description. Um, if you want to try this out now, it's not done yet, but you can use it at its current state. Uh, join my Patreon, and I'll have a post on there. And if you're already my Patreon supporter, you can download it. I'll post all the stuff you need inside Patreon. But that's it. Uh, look forward to releasing this soon, and I'll talk to you guys next time. <laughs>